Welcome to ABC Tutorial. Today we'll be talking about fever. Fever, also known as pyrexia, is the elevation of an individual's core body temperature above a set point regulated by the body's thermoregulatory center in the hypothalamus. This increase in the body's set point temperature is often due to a physiological process brought about by infectious causes or non-infectious causes such as inflammation, malignancies, or autoimmune processes. Fever is one of the most common signs encountered in clinical practice. Normal body temperatures vary depending on many factors including age, sex, time of the day, ambient temperature, activity levels, and so on. Normal daily temperature variation is usually 0.5 degrees Celsius, with the average temperature defined as 37 degrees Celsius, with normal range between 36.5 to 37.5 degrees Celsius. Another temperature of 37.8 degrees Celsius or higher is generally considered to be a fever. Fever is not to be confused with hypothermia. In fever, the thermoregulatory center in the hypothalamus set the body's temperature target to a new higher set point, like setting a thermostat to a new higher value. While in hypothermia, the set point does not change, however, the body is unable to maintain this set point and thus the temperature of the body rises. That is, hypothermia is failure of the body's thermoregulatory mechanisms. Making the distinction between fever and hypothermia is important, as fever can be managed with antipyretic medications. But this has no role in management of hypothermia, which can be managed with physical cooling such as tepid sponging. Fevers can be classified in different ways. One way is the duration of fever. A fever could be acute, lasting less than 7 days as in viral upper respiratory tract infection. It could be subacute, lasting up to 14 days, for example in typhoid. And it could be chronic or persistent, lasting over 14 days as in tuberculosis, HIV and cancers. They can also be classified according to severity as follows. Low-grade fever with temperature of 38.1 to 39 degrees Celsius. Moderate-grade fever with temperature of 39.1 to 40 degrees Celsius. High-grade fever with temperature of 40.1 to 41 degrees Celsius. And hyperpyrexia in which the temperature is greater than or equal to 41.1 degrees Celsius. There are certain patterns of fever that can be seen in certain group of illnesses. For example, in continuous fever, the temperature remains above normal throughout the day and does not fluctuate more than 1 degree Celsius in a 24-hour period. Example is fever seen in urinary tract infection. Intermittent fever, the temperature elevation is present only for a certain period in the day and later cycling back to normal. Example is malaria fever. Among the types of intermittent fever, quotidian fever has a 24-hour periodicity and is typical of malaria seen in plasmodium no less. Tertian fever has a 48 hour periodicity and is typical of malaria caused by Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium vivax, or Plasmodium ovale. Quartan fever has a 72 hour periodicity and is typical of malaria caused by Plasmodium malaria. In remittent fever, the temperature remains above normal throughout the day and fluctuates more than 1 degree Celsius in 24 hours. Example is fever seen in sepsis and effective endocarditis. Persistent fever that cannot be explained after repeated routine clinical evaluation is called fever of unknown origin. Fever of unknown origin was defined as a temperature of 38.3 degrees Celsius or higher with a minimum duration of 3 weeks without an established diagnosis after an intensive one-week investigation in the hospital. A neutropenic fever, also called febrile neutropenia, is fever in the absence of normal immune system function. Because of the lack of neutrophils, bacterial infection can spread rapidly and this fever usually requires urgent medical attention. This kind of fever is commonly seen in people receiving immunosuppressing chemotherapy. The pathogenesis of fever begins with pyrogens, which could be exogenous or endogenous. Exogenous pyrogens initiate fever by inducing host cells, primarily the macrophages, to produce and release endogenous pyrogens, such as interleukin-1, which has multiple biological functions essential for the immune response. These endogenous pyrogens are transmitted to the hypothalamic thermoregulatory center, specifically the organum vasculosum of the lamina terminalis OVLT, where they induce synthesis of prostaglandins, of which prostaglandin E2, PGE2 is the most important. These prostaglandins then raise the thermostatic set point to initiate the febrile response. The hypothalamic thermoregulatory center accomplishes its production by inducing shivering to increase it generated by the muscles and its conservation through vessel constriction. In addition to the function as an endogenous pyrogen, interleukin-1 also activates T-lymphocyte to produce various factors, 
such as tumor necrosis factor and the dilipin 2, which are vital for the immune response. The production of fever simultaneously with lymphocyte activation results in inhibition of bacterial growth, increased bactericidal effect of neutrophils, production of acute phase protein synthesis, and other physiological changes such as anorexia and somnolence. These changes suggest that fever has an adaptive role in host survival during infection. Fever does not necessarily need to be treated as most people with fever recover without specific medical attention. Although it is unpleasant, fever rarely rises to a dangerous level even if untreated. Damage to the brain generally does not occur until the temperature reaches 42 degrees Celsius and it is rare for an untreated fever to exceed 41 degrees Celsius. That is, addressing the underlying etiological factor is more important than treating the fever itself. Conservative measures such as tepid sponging and hydration can help to manage fever. NSAIDs such as ibuprofen, parastamol, and aspirin are examples of antipyretics that can be used to manage fever. This works by blocking the effect of pyrogenes and prostaglandins production in the hypothalamic thermoregulatory center. However, clinical assessment, identification, and treatment of the underlying etiology is the mainstay of treatment, such as usage of antibiotics for bacterial infection and anti-malarial for malaria infection.